drove through the Rockies, uh, the magnificent Rockies, just a few weeks ago and was absolutely stunned by another view of 10 and 12,000 feet. Yeah, but uh, I mean, beautiful mountains have nothing to do really with their altitude. Some of the most beautiful mountains in the world may only be three or 4,000 feet. I mean, all that altitude does is it makes it harder to climb. Like in the depths of the human mind lurks an excitement that is often so shy. From sensing the fear from any horrifying thought to exploring the unseen entities of the world, the shift of the extreme is unfiltered, hell, even random at best. Though there could be one thing in common that we all seem to share. The thrill of the fear. Excessive amounts of adrenaline that flows through your veins or the overload of both excitement and fear. Going as far as facing your phobias just for a dose of dopamine. It may seem like it can't exceed our safety as we are aware our brain is a protective machine. But can we really prevent ourselves from not making mistakes? Ones that could turn your urges into your last breathing days. When I was 7 years old, I had a friend who was absolutely terrified of dolls. Every time he would come over to my house, he would not enter my room since I had a few eerie looking dolls scattered around my shelf. For some odd reason, I never found them to be as scary as he made them out to be. But as of today, I think I finally understand. It was never about the doll itself, rather the story behind it. Annabelle, the definition of pediophobia also known as the fear of dolls. It ticks every box when it comes to a horrifying doll. It looks dead. It even looks dead on the inside. However, it was made for a spirit to be alive again. You can see it in the way it acts, it moves, and the way it looks. It's a spirit trap in the shape of a doll. Once you start the movie, you can see Annabelle's face but only half of it. People are discussing spirits in the background and as the conversation continues, you start noticing the camera zooming out, taking a closer look at Annabelle's full face. Seeing people around it makes you feel somewhat safer, but your gut makes you doubt whether this comfort will even last long. In the true story, Annabelle was a gift from a mother to her 20-year-old daughter, a nursing student. The doll was found in various places and in different positions without anyone moving it. Which by conclusion, and to make any logic of the situation, they assumed there were paranormal spirits trapped inside that doll. The films in the Annabelle series have collectively generated millions of views worldwide, alongside other movies such as The Conjuring, Insidious and so on. With that being said, it strikes a question on why we love to watch such movies which could potentially cause us to be paranoid while watching it, and even after watching it. Did the fact that this horror story was not a fiction play a role in attracting us humans to watch it? Why do we willingly seek out jump scares? Is it because we have a slight confidence that we will overcome the danger? What is it that draws us to these frightful experiences knowing that fear is the very essence of it all? You see, it's quite subjective. There's a science side and a personal side. The science side says that there's something called a safety net, which is a form of protection or support in case of unexpected situations. An example of that would be, while watching a movie, you reach a sense of realization that all of the things displayed in front of you are in fact nothing but fake, leading you to convince yourself that this does not threaten you whatsoever. So why bother waste some of your energy on it? 
you can enjoy the thrilling fear just from the visuals. The correlation this has on watching horror movies is being able to get our desired excitement and adrenaline in a safe environment in which we can also confront our fears without physically being at risk. However, the personal side almost throws most of the science studies out of the window and focuses mainly on the experience of an individual. For instance, as we mentioned, some of us have fears, phobias, and more along those lines. It haunts us in a way knowing that we can live our lives without ever facing those obstacles. And this is where horror movies come in. You feel comfort with a psychological detachment, where once you realize that everything presented in front of you in a movie is fake, you can take a breath and feel relieved. We are able to face our phobias and live the experience without physically being there. Or we could get into the extreme side and physically be there but while having enough safety precautions to protect it from ever being too risky. Though feeling too safe doesn't always mean you are. Something keeps attracting us to a certain fear, the fear of all kinds. And no matter the consequences, we're driven to experience something that may lead us to the end. There are different kind of activities the human mind admires, ones that get the body rushed with adrenaline, ones that make you feel like you lost it all, but makes you pick yourself up when it's done. And that's the case, of course, only if you make it out alive. Adrenaline junkies with a death wish always seem to pursue activities related to bungee jumping, skydiving, and any extreme sport that falls behind the deathful activities. The feeling you get is not like any other, it's much different. You can sense the wind passing across your whole body until you finally realize you're empty. You feel like there's no point of going through this, so why did you? The truth lies within the psychological aspect. If a person is in a deep mental state, these sports wash away the pain and freshen up the breath each human takes. The psychology behind it also proves that no matter what happens, you have a professional with you, guiding you, leading you and protecting you, leaving you asking what you might encounter. Looks like you won't be ready to risk it all anymore, right? we look at lesser dangerous activities, ones that some play to be more courageous and others to be more dangerous and capable human beings. Martial arts are sports played for these specific reasons. For these people, there's one fear that's shared. Traumatophobia. Traumatophobia is the fear of getting injured, hurt or wounded. Some choose to overcome it through martial arts because it gives serotonin caused by none other than power and the feeling of being fully in control. The feeling of being fully in control was never fully experienced by these people. They become obsessed, feared and dangerous. After overcoming their phobia, they become dangerous to the point of being unstoppable. If you even come near them, close to them, you might be taking your last breath because overcoming a fear creates a spirit that wants nothing but to be feared. Wait, is it? With games such as the Ouija board, nothing drives a person to do such thing except both fear and curiosity. The fear of not knowing what to expect, and the curiosity to want more. You've seen these all over the internet. Maybe even some people you know have tried them. You want to be sure if such things exist, so why not try them yourself? You've gathered with your friends for the sole purpose of trying to reach your board together. You're anxious, you're scared, but this keeps you going. When you reach the board, you collectively put your hands on its compass. You ask it a question and it moves. 
the sphere makes you sense some kind of ache you have never experienced, which pushes you to further continue. Suddenly, you feel someone is looking at you. None of the people around you. It's behind you. Would you be willing to risk it all? You are a night guard at a pizza restaurant and your shift is from 12am to 6am. The restaurant is obviously closed, meaning that you have one job only. You need to watch five animatronics that are scattered around the store. Easy job, right? You realize something is off. One of the animatronics had disappeared from your sight. Where did it go? But wait. In early 2017, the release of a video game encompassing every fear I have had me terrified. The game is none other than Outlast 2, where you witness a creepy atmosphere that gets you in a zone of disgust, one that is shocking and full of surprises. At the beginning of Outlast 2, you put in the shoes of a journalist that went on a journey with his wife to investigate the murder of a pregnant woman, only to find yourself in a village inhabited by a murderous cult that believes that end times are upon them. But when your wife disappears, you run, hide and survive for both of you to get out alive. But you simply won't. Stay back! I swear to fucking Christ the first person who touches me loses their eyes! God wants the child. No! No! God wants the child. God wants the child. Get off me! God wants the child. Lynn! No, you... No! No! You motherfuckers! Get off me! You leave her alone! Leave her alone! Lynn! Lynn! These are two prime examples of many enjoyed horror games. Games that let us immerse ourselves and believe this is what reality is, for at least the same moment. Actually, a lot of criteria lead us to submerge in such worlds, but it all depends on each one of us. Could it be the idea of facing fears? You feel safe. You have a sense of realization that this is all fictional. You feel empowered to overcome what's displayed in front of you, or at least you tell yourself that. Even interactions can make the player blend in, thinking this is reality. The experience makes the player heavily curious and on the edge of his seat not knowing what comes next. That rush you feel coming with the anticipation of a jump scare, with the feeling of horror and seeing disturbing imagery. It undoubtedly plays a role. Some players tend to be addicted to the rush running through their veins, leading them to come back no matter how long they stop. What about the storyline? The sound designs. 
course, I'm taking the long way. The lighting. When you feel something is not right in any way, it builds up this tension in your body that people crave. The sense of dopamine you feel makes your body tremble with curiosity. Needing more and more feels of a thrilling experience to immerse in what's displayed. Live in the moment and feel like you're in the middle of the action. Nonetheless, being exposed to this feeling will make you feel uncanny and uncomfortable at first. But with time, nothing, and I mean nothing, will make you feel this way except fear, danger, and adventure. And these three words represent what we as human beings try to avoid, but always find ourselves coming back to them unconsciously, or even willingly. No one knows how to truly or fully describe what is known as the thrill of the fear. Many explanations, analysis, understandings can make you wonder how the fear works and why people enjoy it, but you can never have one definition. Such senses and feelings you experience can be addicting, and for some, without even these experiences, what's the point of life? This is why something really needs to be known, with all the everlasting tears, for some, nothing cures it but the thrill of the fear. <laughs> 